on that job is very hard to get. You're not gonna find it on Indeed by no means. Hi guys, Colton follow us from Welding Academy here. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about pipeline, mostly downhill welding, training to get on the pipeline. So we do offer downhill here at Western Welding Academy. That's actually gonna be our last phase of the school. So you get your hand into it. Uh, we'll test you on 6G. Most of the time when you go take a test for a job, you're gonna be either in a 5G position or a 6G position. You will also have to do a branch, which is just a saddle weld. Most of the time it's 12 inch pipe, 375 wall. You're gonna put your root in, the inspectors will come over and look at it, and it's gotta be perfect. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You don't. You never know what kind of day your inspector's gonna have. You gotta make it perfect, you gotta cut back through it and fix it, hopefully he'll let you. But hopefully he's in a good mood that day. Hopefully you put a slick little root in there. I always feel like once I get past my visual on my root, I got it made. You gotta make sure you burn that hot pass hot. That's why they call it a hot pass in the first place. You gotta make sure you clean all that slag out of there. And then your fills, I always like, like to run my fills at the same heat as my hot pass, or maybe even a little hotter. And of course, you wanna put a pretty cap on it. Most jobs are gonna require you to test on 12 inch pipe and do a branch. That'll get you from 12 inch, 500 wall, all the way down to your two inch, get 40. So it's a big variety in that smaller pipe. Generally speaking, when you get on bigger jobs and bigger pipe, I'd say probably 20 inch and up, you're gonna start brother-in-law on your test with another welder and you probably don't know him from Adam. Don't worry about your side and he has to worry about his own. So as long as you guys both get a decent fit up, you'll be all right. Now, when they go to cut straps out of that, most common what I've seen here lately is we'll do two root, four nick, and two tinsels. Every now and again, they'll bend some cap bends also. So they call those faces in case you didn't know that. As far as your testing goes, hopefully you get a good brother-in-law to help you out spacing. Hopefully you get a good fit up. Hopefully it's not windy outside while you're doing it. Maybe you can get lucky and be in a shop. Uh, it's always nice when you get to go weld in the shop for the day. In case you're wondering how to get on the pipeline, the best way to do it is to know something that's already on the pipeline. That job is very hard to get. You're not gonna find it on Indeed by no means. So once you find a buddy that'll let you go be a helper, or if you've already been welding and you wanna give downhill a try, uh, the best way to get on is to have a buddy that's already doing it, and maybe he'll put his name on you. Uh, for practicing this, get on the pipeline. We're learning how to downhill. We're just trying to burn some rod, get better. Best way I can describe how to do that, go get you a nice big piece of pipe, preferably bare, so I can scrape the coating off of it. Let's start with a 532nd or four millimeter. We're just gonna burn rods from top to bottom. We're gonna get really good at our cap. The reason we wanna get really good at our cap is generally speaking, when we start pipelining, that's where we're gonna end up. We're gonna end up filling and capping. They're gonna keep you off the front end. They don't wanna get you no repairs, especially if you're just getting going. So once you get pretty decent with that 532nd, we're going to go ahead and jump up to our 316th or five millimeter. That's gonna give you a little more iron to play with. So just keep that in mind. As you're practicing, we wanna make sure we have a beautiful cap. The roots for the dough, but the cap for the show. Everybody's gonna be looking at it. What extra is gonna be looking at. That's what everybody that walks by is gonna be looking at. The better the cap is, the more people will probably give you a little bit more respect. Downhill versus uphill on the pipeline. 90% of the time, you're gonna be doing downhill. The reason for that is it's much faster, more time efficient. You can do a lot more, a lot faster. 7018 is great, but generally speaking, when we're outside, we're pipelining and the wind comes into effect there. So we gotta make sure that we have good wind blocks and cause you still get some porosity, you get some pinholes, all that good stuff with our downhill welds also, but not quite as bad as you would if you were on 7018. Uh, so the most common rods that we're gonna use while we're pipelining is 7010 and 8010. Now there's a bunch of different companies that make a bunch of different rods, but generally speaking, we'll be using the 7010 or 8010. 7010 actually is better for colder climates. I, I've been told it gives a little more stretch, not quite as brittle. So you'll find that more up north. 8010, more harder of a rod. That's my preferred rod also is the 8010. I feel like they burn a little better. They also make 8010Gs, which are very popular, and they figure out horribly. A lot of companies do use them. I believe the preferred rod for most pipeliners is 8010 Arc 80s. Uh, also known as pipeliners. If you do long arc them or go outside your bevels a little bit, you'll start to get some pinholes, frosty, bug holes, whatever you want to call it. So some basic equipment that we're going to need to get going. We're gonna need a welding truck, a three quarter ton, one ton truck, and a weld machine. Then I mean, it's your bare basics to get going. You can use a three quarter ton truck, but most pipeliners do use one ton dualies. The reason for that is when you're pulling a travel trailer, driving down the road, you got all that extra weight, you're a lot more stable going down the road. And when you go build a welding bed for it, give you a little bit more toolbox room. That being said, I've always had a backup rig and it's always been a single wheel truck. The reason for that is the maintenance is a lot lower on a single wheel truck. The mud doesn't get packed in your duels, a lot easier to work on, way easier to change your brakes on a single wheel than it is a dually. 
So that's why most pipeliners do have dually welding rigs. And just like I'm saying, driving down the road, driving 12 hours, 20 hours for a job, a lot more stable, a lot more reliable to have your own travel trailer. And if you blow a tire, you got two spares, I guess. Welding machines. So 90%, I'd say of everybody that ever started pipelining, has had an SA200. The reason for that is they've made them forever and they've been pretty much the exact same ever since they started making them. The motor has changed slightly. They went from a F162 to an F163, which, I mean, your head gaskets are a little different. But it's pretty much the exact same thing. The reason I suggest you have an SA200 when you break out, when it does break down, and it's gonna, trust me, is everybody's had one. Everybody knows how to work on one. You can still get parts for them. Uh, that's my preferred machine. I feel like they run extremely smooth. The only downfall of that is they are older machines so they're gonna break down it's not a question of does it leak oil it's how much oil does it leak so always keep that in mind but the parts are still pretty easy to find for them also if I had to go and buy a brand new weld machine today uh, I would definitely go for a 300D. The reason for that is I get my AC power and my DC power so I can run AC tools and DC tools off of it. And the fuel efficiency for a diesel weld machine compared to your gas machine. Your gas machine is going to get about a gallon an hour of runtime, and your diesel machine is gonna burn about three gallons in a 10 hour day. Your fuel efficiency is just so much better with a diesel machine. Now, a gas machine does handle the load a lot better and it'll start to bog down. And I don't know what it is about it, but man, it just puts prettier cap on it feel like it runs a lot smoother and a diesel machine's just gonna run it's never gonna really bog down take a huge load because it doesn't run enough rpms to do it so we've talked about the x-ray guys we talked about keeping our welds clean talked about how to get on the line how to get some practice so you can get on the line hopefully got some buddies that can get you a job that's usually how it works this is colton we'll see you on the next one